Film Guy recaps here, don't forget to like and subscribe. The film opens with Elizabeth Schoff, a teenage girl, who is lecturing her students. A man soon after appears in her classroom. He and the teacher are seen talking earnestly. Lucy Jennings, a female student, is called out. She departs with the unidentified man after gathering her luggage. Elizabeth talks about Lucy's event with her closest friend Amanda, who also happens to be a naive person, on their walk home from school. She admits that Lucy's mother is an odd woman and says she doesn't know the man. Amanda says that nobody knows why the police visited Lucy's home a few days ago. Elizabeth screams out to her mother Madeline as soon as she gets home. She informs her that she has already arrived home with her younger brother Bobby. Elizabeth's family all spends their leisure time together later in the evening. However, there is a mystery guy excavating close to their home. Elizabeth's family is going about their everyday business the next morning. Don, Elizabeth's father, leaves the house at the start of it all. A friend comes to get him so they may go hunting. After that, Madeline sends Elizabeth and Bobby to the bus stop so they may board the school bus. Elizabeth's mascara falls out of her bag, but she's too busy to notice it. Elizabeth requests Madeline's permission to spend the night on Saturday at Amanda's place while they are traveling. Elizabeth may do it as long as Amanda's mother gives her permission, according to her mother. Elizabeth then begs Madeline to accompany her back to the home after realizing she left her mascara in the room. Madeline forbids this as she is already running late for work. When the fight between Elizabeth and her mother gets heated, the mother informs Elizabeth that she shouldn't go back home if she can't modify her attitude. Elizabeth seems obviously upset now. Taking her mother's advice a bit too literally, she makes the decision to leave the house and never return. Elizabeth receives a letter from her boyfriend Case in the morning asking about their Saturday plans. Following Elizabeth and Amanda home from school, Case goes with them. Case conceals part of his Mary Jane from his parents by putting it in Elizabeth's backpack when he gets off the school bus. Elizabeth declines Case's offer of a ride before he leaves because she would rather walk the short distance to her house. She gets to her home's driveway just in time to hear an enigmatic, glasses-wearing guy call her out from the backyard. He says he works as a local police officer. It seems like he's taken her little brother into custody. Elizabeth has always taken excellent care of her little brother out of affection. Elizabeth approaches the men because she is getting very worried about her brother, but he handcuffs her hands right away and accuses her of growing illegal marijuana plants in her garden. Elizabeth tries to clarify that this is unrelated to them, but he puts a bomb around her neck instead. He tells her not to try to open it or flee because it would detonate. He then yanks her away from the place so she may meet her younger brother. Elizabeth just needs to do what the cops say in order to be safe. Meanwhile, Bobby answers Madeline's phone at her house. Then he tells Madeline that his sister is still not home, which makes his mother think Elizabeth is going to be late for work that day. Soon later, Madeline gives Bobby another call to ask for an update. Madeline instructs her son to check for his sister at the end of the road, where a bus typically drops her off, after realizing that her daughter has not returned home. Madeline tries to contact Amanda to find out where Elizabeth is in the interim. Madeline phones the police to report her daughter's disappearance, which has left her unaccounted for for nearly a day, and to beg for assistance in tracking her down as their concerns and suspicions about Elizabeth intensify. Elizabeth, meanwhile, becomes uneasy and senses that something is wrong in the woods. She persists in questioning the men about why she is being brought so far away and when she will see Bobby again. The man finally confesses that he is not a police officer when they are traveling to the woods. He also says that he has abducted the woman and that he would shoot her if she tries to flee. Elizabeth is shocked, screams in terror, and believes that she was foolish to believe what the eerie guy said. The abductor tells her to go into his subterranean hiding bunker once she has walked a certain distance. She begs the abductor not to murder her as she grows more and more terrified within the bunker. When she questions the abductor about his intentions, he grins wildly. Madeline starts to feel anxious as it gets late and searches the road leading to her house in hopes of finding her daughter. When she meets with Amanda and her mother, the latter suggests that she call the police right away. Then, hoping that they would assist her in finding her daughter, Madeline phones the police. Don gets home from his hunting excursion an hour later. Elizabeth hasn't come home yet, and Madeline tells Don that she's growing very concerned. However, Don attempts to reassure his wife that Elizabeth will return home shortly. A short while later, two police officers show up to their residence and check Elizabeth's neighborhood's woods. However, the darkness makes it impossible for them to uncover any proof. Following that, they interview Madeline about their actions and the occasions leading up to Elizabeth's disappearance. Madeline tells them that earlier in the morning, she got into a fight with Elizabeth. Because of their earlier fight, the police surmise that Elizabeth purposefully chooses to stay at her friend's house rather than going back to her own. Madeline, though, is adamant that her daughter won't go that far. 
Madeline's claim has not persuaded the police officers, who tell her to get in touch with him if she hasn't come home in a few days. Elizabeth's attacker is doing the unimaginable to her while she is imprisoned underground. Elizabeth is at this time unable of resisting and can only howl in terror. Elizabeth's cries start to irritate the abductor, who then threatens to murder her if she tries to go. The guy admits that she is unable to leave since the hideaway is full with traps. Then Elizabeth learns that Vincent is the name of this crazy man. While she watches TV, Vincent tells her that since there hasn't been any news about her absence, nobody is searching for her. Elizabeth's parents get a second visit from the two police officers who had earlier paid them a visit at her home. At this point, Madeline keeps saying that her daughter won't just up and walk away, citing a variety of justifications, such as the fact that her room still contains her most valuable possessions. She implores the authorities to locate her daughter as soon as possible. Sheriff Thompson is then informed by the two police officers about Elizabeth's disappearance. When Thompson hears it, he chastises them for their tardiness and claims that the 48 hours after the defeat are the most important. On the third day, fearing that she may never be able to quell Vincent's passion, Elizabeth attempts to calm herself by thinking back to her good school days spent with Case. Shortly after, they hear Don and his friends' voices, asking where Elizabeth may be. Nevertheless, they discover no indication that his daughter is just underneath them. In an attempt to stop Elizabeth from crying out, Vincent held his gun to her head. Elizabeth can't help but cry when she considers how close she was to her father at the time, but she is unable to stop herself. A few days later, Elizabeth vanishes and the media begins to report on it. Her emotions are conflicted between grief and emotion, especially when her mother talks to her and tells her how much they love her and hope she gets back home soon. By day four, Elizabeth is starting to consider leaving the place. She is aware that she can't go too quickly though. Her life will be in jeopardy, therefore she needs to exercise caution. She then starts conversing with Vincent and answering all of his inquiries in an effort to grow closer to him. She makes it seem as though she concurs with what the kidnapper stated. Elizabeth now understands why Vincent constructed the bunker and abducted her. In reality, Vincent intended to move in with his spouse, whom he called Peanut. Vincent claims that Peanut betrayed him by accusing him of raping her and then reporting it to the authorities, causing him to hide there by himself. After that, Vincent decided against moving Peanut in with him since the authorities had moved her out of the neighborhood. Ultimately, he intended to replace Peanut with a different person, and regrettably, Elizabeth was abducted because she was abducted on that particular day because she was in the wrong location at the wrong time. It's now the fourth day. Elizabeth tries to grab for Vincent's rifle when he's sleeping, but she can't since her neck is restrained. Soon later, Elizabeth is being searched for by helicopters, and when Vincent wakes up, they can hear it. Vincent blocks infrared sensor's ability to sense heat by using aluminum foil. Elizabeth then takes advantage of this chance to make another attempt to get close to Vincent. She is hoping Vincent would fall for her act of appearing to be in love. She eventually manages to identify Vincent's vulnerability and take advantage of it to get away. At last, Vincent falls for a trick and takes off the handcuffs that had been fastened around her throat. Elizabeth and Vincent are now growing closer, and she is even permitted to attempt a gunshot. Even though this pistol isn't exactly like a real gun, it can nonetheless kill someone close. Vincent is amazed by Elizabeth's rapid learning curve and skill with the rifle. Later that evening, Elizabeth is brought by Vincent to get food that someone had left in an old automobile after he shackles her hands. They then add river water to the jerry can. Subsequently, Vincent abruptly detects the noise of a helicopter and quickly grabs Elizabeth to retreat to his hiding spot. Elizabeth deliberately leaves one of her shoes behind as she runs. She hopes that evidence of her presence will be found by anybody looking for her. The seventh day has already passed. Elizabeth starts to carry out her preparations while Vincent is sleeping. She attempts to use Vincent's cell phone to send a message to her mother. Sadly, though, there is no signal underground, so the message cannot be transmitted. Elizabeth tries to open the underground entrance with the mobile. Fortunately, the message gets across. In order to avoid being discovered, Elizabeth then swiftly erases the message from Vincent's mobile device. It doesn't end there, Elizabeth tries to take his gun and shoot Vincent while he's still asleep. However, the gun doesn't discharge a single shot when she presses the trigger. She realizes her plans are not going as she had intended, which causes her to feel even more agitated. Sheriff Thompson notifies Elizabeth's parents in the meanwhile that the hunt will shortly come to an end since Elizabeth might not be in their region anymore. In a week, they have traversed about 20 square miles and have not discovered a trace or clue of anything. On the seventh day, Madeline is taken aback to see a message from Elizabeth when she opens her phone in the morning. The fact that Elizabeth is still alive relieves and reassures Madeline. Don tells Madeline that they will contact the police first and not to dial the number just yet. 
However, the two police officers let Madeline phone the number because they think the message is a joke. Luckily, their commander arrives just in time to prevent Madeline from phoning the number, doing so would put Elizabeth in grave danger. The phone provider helps the authorities locate the owner of the phone on the ninth day. After learning that Catherine Heath is the owner of the phone, which was registered around three weeks earlier, the cops show up at Catherine's house right away. One of the police officers unexpectedly recalls that he has been to her house previously when they get there. Although they had never met the suspect, he oversaw a case of sexual harassment that included Vincent Filia, Catherine's boyfriend, from a year prior. When they start questioning Catherine, she just says that she hasn't seen her lover in more than a year. Soon later, they find a subterranean chamber that is accessible from Catherine's home's exterior as well. They come to the conclusion that the reason they couldn't discover their suspect this time around is because he's a difficult digger. The fact that Catherine hasn't seen Vincent in more than a year makes the cops dubious of her account as well. According to Thompson, the message was sent from a mobile phone that was registered in Catherine's name to Elizabeth's mother. Thompson also wants to know how Catherine's phone, which was only purchased three weeks ago, was obtained by Vincent. He then begins to tell Catherine that she would be complicit in the murder if Vincent murders Elizabeth and Catherine deceives them. Finally, Catherine indicates the spot where she gives Vincent food upon request. Since Vincent needs to be able to travel there to get the food, Thompson then gives his group the command to head back to the surrounding woodland. In order to entice Vincent to come out of hiding, he also plans to utilize the media to reveal Vincent's name. Although this is an extremely hazardous strategy, the sheriff is aware that Vincent is a coward and will likely flee once more, as he has in the past. However, when Vincent sees his name on the news, he gets alarmed and starts to suspect Elizabeth. Vincent then looks through his phone, but he doesn't see any messages. Elizabeth makes an effort to persuade Vincent that she wants to be with him through thick and thin and that she loves him. She adds that the police will only imprison Vincent if they discover them together. Vincent is given the assurance by Elizabeth that he needs to go right away and that she will soon join him wherever he goes. At this time, Elizabeth eventually learns that the peanut Vincent had earlier referenced is, in fact, Lucy Jennings, who was Elizabeth's classmate at the start of the movie. Furthermore, Catherine, his lover and Lucy's mother, is the one who brings the meal. As a matter of truth, Vincent had long harbored feelings for Catherine's daughter and had even considered marriage. Vincent eventually concedes to Elizabeth's point of view after all of his admissions. Then, when Elizabeth gave him her word to stay in the bunker, he is ready to part ways with her. As soon as it's safe, she will wait for Vincent to come get her and marry her. Elizabeth, who has been waiting in the bunker, eventually finds the nerve to come out on the tenth day, which is the day after Vincent departed. She has really been misled into thinking that there are a lot of explosives and concealed traps outdoors. She is hoping someone will hear her cries and respond to assist her. Luckily, at that moment, Sheriff Thompson and his squad are strolling through the adjacent forest. The sheriff runs up to her as soon as he hears her voice. The cops then take her to the hospital. When Don, Madeline, and Bobby get to the hospital, Elizabeth is finally reunited with them. Here, this movie ends. To watch more awesome and thought-provoking movie recaps, please subscribe to Film Guy Recaps. Don't forget to like this video and tell us in the comments which movie you want to see next. Goodbye for now.